Right, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, something that's probably made a lot of effects artists uh, pull their hair out, um, and that's particle mesh alignment. So, um, as much as I love Cascade, there is a lot of things that it's not very good at, uh, and this is sadly one of them. It doesn't have a great UI, there's settings that override other settings, um, it's not very clear or particularly well documented, I don't think. So, uh, hopefully this will demystify a few of those things. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure everything that you want is possible to do, but it's just a case of tweaking all the right settings and everything first. So, before we get started, um, if you're ever having any metal alignment problems, there's a couple of things to make sure. First, make sure that the um, kind of alignment direction is down the x-axis of your um, of your modeling program. When we start getting camera facing, it's going to be this bit that's going to be pointing towards us. So when you want to do camera facing meshes, make sure that's the way that uh, the direction it's going in. And also create something like this, a bit of a debug model. Um, sometimes it can be difficult to tell what's going on exactly with your own model. Um, quite lined anyway. Um, but this has obviously strong directionality, strong rotation, um, and hopefully makes things a little bit easier. And once it's wor working, you can obviously swap it out. So, um, so first thing to note when you bring in your mesh and apply it, um, the initial size. By default, if I create a new particle, initial size set to 25. This is Unreal units. Um, so that's the same as these values here. When we bring it in, turn it to a mesh that initial size changes from being Unreal units to a multiplier of the size it was when it was exported. So I just take my, my alignment arrow, take that in, eh, it's 25 times bigger than we exported, so uh, don't want to do that, just going to set our initial size down to 1. Um, and here we see I've got three different particles at different orientations. So the first step, the first default thing that it's doing, uh, is no alignment whatsoever. It's using that world aligned that that we exported. This is exported in the x-axis and then here these are now aligned along the x-axis and that doesn't matter how we rotate. It's always going to be along that x-axis. So um, that's the first sort of metal alignment. It's aligned to world space. So um, yeah, can be useful. Um, generally we're going to want to change how that works. Um, firstly we can change it to local space. So now our mesh is spawned facing the same direction as our, our emitter. Uh, and emitters have that arrow. This one here, this points in the x direction of the emitter. Um, so that if we turn this into local space, our objects point down the x direction of that emitter, which is cool. Um, while we're using the screen alignment, screen alignment of PSA square, which is the default, we have this option here in mesh rotation. So we turn that one on. This gives us rotation values in each of the three axes. So here I can create a random value uh, in X and that's going to be local because we're still in local axis here. If I change this, this is now going to be in world. You can see it's rotating. But maybe make using rotation rate instead. This is doing the same thing. So random rotation, uh, random values in our rotation rate. It's going to give us rotation around that axis. Um, go back to local space. Again, it's keeping that, but it's keeping that axis constant. Um, if we do Y, our local Y axis is that one. Local to our emitter. Now they're all spinning around this way. Uh, and our local Z is going to be this one. So hopefully you can see how kind of get all those types of movement if we needed. Um, and again, if I go back to world, now it's rotating around the world Z, which is always up. And that'd be world Y. It's rotating around this axis always. So um, that's your basic sort of mesh alignment options. Um, if we just undo that for a sec and put it back to local. We also have in mesh data, a bunch of other mesh alignment options. And if you hover over this one, the mesh alignment here, it does say the required module screen alignment must be set to PSA type specific. So if I change my required module from square to type specific, now we're activating this mesh alignment. And no longer does our mesh rotation do anything. Mesh rotation rate. 
this is doing nothing, it's not moving anything at all. So these ones only work when you're using PSA Square. Uh, and now this is doing camera face with roll on um, our mesh alignment. And like I said earlier, they are now facing towards us along that x-axis. And as we move the camera around, they are following that orientation. Um, so it says here, with roll. Well, where's our roll settings? Well, this doesn't actually tell you. But we'll get to it a bit later. Actually, now, rather than using our mesh rotation rate, if we go back to using our initial rotation rate, that's where we get our roll settings from. Um, so that we can go faster and faster. Um, and now it's pointing towards us and we've got that rotation. So if you wanted to make a sprite that was camera facing but had rotation on it, this would be how you would do it. Um, other options we have in here, uh, face camera with spin. So you can rotate towards or away from the camera. Um, you can see again as we spin around, this is doing rotation that way. Um, and then finally, face camera with locked axes. What does that do? Well, by default, nothing, because our locked axis is set to nothing. So this lock axis option applies when we're using face camera with locked axis. So now we lock it to X. It's not really facing the camera anymore. Uh, except it is a bit. It's trying to keep that rotation round. You can also do lock to Y. To Z. Let me see if we had that rotation back in. Um, note here, there's these ones down here that say rotate. Well, they're just a hangover for a different part of where we're using these. And if we mouse over this, it even says here in EPAL rotate X, uh, ignored for measurements treated as EPAL none. So this down here, these three are a hangover uh, of of a setting where this is being used elsewhere. So I believe this is the same drop down list as if we had a lock axis made in here. Station axis. So this is using the same settings. I have no idea how that would work with the mesh, so let's not do down that road. Um, and then lastly, we also have this option here for camera facing. See it says in the in the uh the tooltip again when set uh axis lock option, so this is ignored, uh as well as locked axis screen alignment, other settings that are ignored. So this kind of is the final override, so this now gives us a full set of different ways we can do this. So um facing Z up, if I just turn my rotation off, you can see where that little kind of wing is pointing. We change this to Z up or Z down. Minus Z up, then Y up. So you've got full control over kind of like which way that initial bit is spawning. Uh, lock taxis again. Velocity line. The velocity line we'll get to in a second. Um, the other option we've got here. Find the right setting. We can apply particle rotation as spin. Spin. And that's saying here again, spiked particle rotation. So that means this 2D rotation rate, not the mesh particle rotation rate which was again going to do nothing because we're using this alignment mode um, so if we just turn that on now it's been back acting as spin okay, into here. the locked axis and so if we do velocity aligned again a tooltip option says it here um, all velocity aligned options do not require screen alignment to be set to PSA velocity so you can do PSA velocity here but if you want to get the access to these things, you want to set it to um, type specific and then use one of the velocity aligned here. Um, if I put some velocity in these, let's do some downwards velocity. You can see they're aligned. Our rotation rate is being applied to spin. If I turn that off, now our rotation rates rotating our sprites or rotating them as sprites so um, if you want to have a velocity aligned spinning particle which turns out quite often you probably do it's quite a cool thing to be have um, you want to have the particle rotation applied to spin here Let's hide this um, and then they're doing velocity aligned hopefully that should be all the options um, 
like I say, there's a, a few gotchas. First thing, getting them aligned to the x-axis. Normally when you make things, you don't necessarily need it to be x-axis because you can rotate it. Well, particle alignment's pretty complex. Um, so, it might be that you've modelled the thing the wrong way around. Um, if it was kind of like along its axis, um, I want to use velocity, yeah, just make sure it's it's along that x-axis. Um, um, so yeah, like I say, it is all there. Um, it does sometimes take a bit of a tweaking to find the right setting, um, but hopefully it should be possible. Um, I've completely broken that one now, but um, like I say, I have always managed to find the right set of settings to, to do the thing I want, um, but it's not the clearest UI in the world, um, but hopefully you can always get something uh, to work eventually. So uh, I hope that's helpful, uh, any questions, comments, etc, let me know, um, and I'll see you all next time.